55. Starting in December, Fishing the DMV will be cutting back to only airing one episode per week until we hit our first Patreon goal of 100 Patreon supporters. We are only 55 members away from achieving our first goal. For less than a pack of Cinco's or buying a jackhammer chatterbait, you can help support the show. Patreon supporters will receive a special monthly discount off all their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Again, that's a special monthly discount off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Access to a private Facebook group community. They'll be entered into weekly prize giveaways with the winner being announced during Monday Night Live. They'll have access to special members-only videos and live streams, part of monthly competitions that we put on, and so much more. Again, we are only 55 members away from achieving our goal. And once we achieve it, we'll be putting out more and more episodes each week. If you would like to support the show and join us on Patreon, link in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. All right, guys, welcome to our first ever, ever Patreons only live stream. So this is basically how it works. This is going to be live streamed for my Patreon supporters, and it'll be uploaded to the rest of the public uh, in about you know a couple of days. But this way, you guys got a chance to ask the questions. And I thought the guy that everyone wants, the guy that people beg for and plead, is a man that runs Ever Potomac. He's basically a god in most people's eyes. And luckily, I was able to trick him, convince him, or however, to get him on the show to answer some of your questions. Let's bring him on. Jeff, uh, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Hey, what's up? Dude. Oh, uh, man, it's been way too long, and you've had a lot going on, haven't you? Yeah, I sure have. So um, we actually, guys, which is a first for this show, we uh, actually tried to do a little uh, prep work. And uh, so Jeff was Jeff called me, which was smart on him, because I would have forgotten to call him. Um, and so a couple of things that we wanted to go over today, uh, or at least to start with, was uh, just kind of the, the tools of the trade, if, if I'm correct, Jeff. Uh, talk about that yeah. a little bit. Susquehanna River and, of course, the Upper Potomac. We're getting a little feedback. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Yep, I can hear you, okay. okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not echoing anymore. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so let's just let's just get the ball rolling here. And then again, guys, uh, I have a call-in number right here, 240-542-9877. Uh, I have my phone all dialed in here as well, and we can kind of get started here. And then, guys, just let me know. I have the comment sections up everywhere. I'll get all your questions answered. If you want me to adjust the volume, I can do that as well. Um, so, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Um, tools of the trade. What right now have you purchased that has really been helping you out? Oh, I just purchased a TIG welder. What and is a TIG that? Welder, for anyone that doesn't know, a TIG welder is what you use to, to weld aluminum. Hmm. So it's, uh, it's probably a must, I would say, in my eyes, because that way I, I'll never go down. If I get a hole mm. in my boat, I can fix it myself. I actually have extra aluminum as well. The same gauge that that's my boat haul is, and the same gauge that anything else on my boat is. Um, that's actually pretty smart. I mean, you you just never know what's going to happen when you're um, when you're running these uh, just any boat, any outboard on a regular basis. Like yesterday, I get to the boat ramp in the um, the bendex. If anyone knows what a bendex is on a starter. The Bendex just basically blew apart. My my motor's two 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 months old, and uh, my boat wouldn't start. So I had to go up to uh, Big B Boat and RV. You guys know where that is in Duncannon, Pennsylvania. Some people might. That's where I bought the motor. They're they're as far as I'm concerned the closest Mercury dealer and Mercury warranty dealer. They're the closest one to me. And um, they were able to put a starter on for me in the parking lot, which was nice. They actually pulled it off of a uh, another boat, a, a brand new motor, and put it on mine. How far is that from here? Uh, a little over an hour. That's not bad. I mean, that's not bad at all. But I mean, so 
my, picture that came to my mind is you're driving 180 and you tried to yeet it on the trailer through the parking lot and just skid it right on there. How did you put a hole in your boat? Oh, I just, um, I was running uh, a, a few, uh, few days ago and uh, it was windy and the upper Potomac River is real low. And um, I went to the right when I should have gone to the left. I didn't go to the left because I, I couldn't read the water real well and it was choppy. And I knew where I was going, and I knew it was shallow. I just figured, I just figured I'd skim the rocks. I figured wrong, and um, <laughs> I, put up, I, you know, there's people with me. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but um, you know, if if you operate a, a a jet boat long enough, you have an idea of when you hit something, if you probably have a hole or not. And what this did is it, it made a crack on the bottom of my boat. Mm. And, uh, I'll tell you, one of the best things to have with you. If you like to fish a lot and uh, you don't want to have to go down for the weekend or whatever kind of trip you have set up is uh, yeah, you, you're probably going to uh, think I'm crazy. You guys have heard of flex seal tape. Yeah, I've heard of that, that crazy stuff. That guy that's on there making holes and, yeah, and just uh, giant it like that. Yeah. It on buckets and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That stuff actually does work. You know, Holy shit. In, this, in this case, it, it, it did work. But see, the problem is what I'm going to have to do now is when I pull that tape off, I have to clean that aluminum. And I have to clean the aluminum real well to be able to uh, weld that spot closed. You you mentioned that on, um, actually, no, it was like two, it was it was in the spring, actually, at the Berkeley High School uh, Fishing Expo, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, yeah, because we had, oh, I forget his name, the welder. Please help oh, me. I'm Jeff, sorry. Uh, Jeff, um, McGowan. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, we, we talked about how, He's the one that showed me how to weld. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it was there that we actually talked about this where I didn't know the intricacies to actually welding a boat when you had these issues that came up with it. You had to clean it out. It wasn't that you just quit, you just weld it right on there. There's a process yeah. to it. Yeah. No, you, you have to make sure it's clean. You have to make sure it's dry. Look, I'm not a I'm not a professional like he is when it comes to welding. I don't know the ins and outs of it. If I have an issue, I I would contact him or call him. But um, right now, his uh, his aluminum welder, his TIG welder, he has it getting worked on. So he can't even he couldn't even help me if if he wanted. You know, he can't even help me. Hmm. Um, and this is the reason why I have a TIG welder is because mm. I can't rely on anyone for anything. I mean, that's the thing with everything getting as expensive as it is. I, I, I mean, I, I've talked to this to a couple of people. It's like if you can rechange your brake pads, do that because it's like a thousand dollars to get somebody to do it for you, and then bucks. Yeah, exactly. Like everything's so expensive right now, man. Um, the uh, I have like a small parts store in my house or in my uh, in my garage or shop, whatever you want to call it. Whenever it comes to uh, um, my outboard and my boat. Mm. I have, uh, I actually have another starter, a starter, and it's an OEM starter, but, uh, luckily I didn't have to use it. It's, it's rebuilt for my old motor. If, if your starter ever breaks, all you have to do is take it, take it somewhere and, and they can rebuild it. It's a lot cheaper than buying a brand new one. How many miles did you put on that motor? Which one? Your last one. Uh, it had uh, right around a, it had a thousand hours on it. Oh wow! In five years. That's freaking crazy, damn dude. That's 200, 200 plus, depending on what year. I guess what year, whatever year it was. Two hundred hours a, a year. So, what other things are you carrying this time of year? Before we get into kind of the fishing aspect of this of this live stream. Oh, uh, what other stuff do I have uh, uh, to help me guide? Yeah. Equipment. I have, uh, I have waders. The river's so low right now. I was on a trip recently and I had to put my waders on and hop out and, uh, uh, get the boat to the boat ramp because of where I, I went out of, uh, I went out of the spot that uh, was real low. I have waders. I have, uh, what else do I have? Oh, I've taken a chainsaw before out on the water. This was years ago, though. A, a creek had fish in it. I cut, I cut this tree out of the way. <laughs> dude, you're starting to sound like Keith Pochet. Have you ever watched Keith Pochet's stuff? No. Uh -uh. Oh, dude, 
he has a uh, he has a completely decked out. I think it's a, a Gator Trex boat. You know, Chat, you can help me out with that. And he carries a chainsaw. He has a bilge. He has waders. He has a winch because it's like a Louisiana boat. A winch built into the front of his boat, oh, so he'll yeah, go yeah. up over beaver dams and stuff. Um, but apparently those rock proofs, like you can like literally like jump small riffles and stuff with them, allegedly. Which or yeah, I think it's rock proof boats that allegedly you could do that yeah, too. But really. Yeah, they have some type of plastic liner underneath them. I forget the actual name of it, but it's a plastic liner. Yeah, that they slide right over top of rocks. That that's real. Would you, with a brand new client, though, be like just hold on and then just go airborne? Well, no, I mean that's that's that's, uh, that's the way I see that is if uh, you have no other choice. Well, it's really like that right now with the way the water levels are. It's insane. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking this. Why not we start with the Susquehanna River and then we get into the Upper Potomac? Okay. All right. So on the Susquehanna River, the water is like right around 50 degrees right now. It's getting real low at the um, Harrisburg Gauge. It's like four feet. To me, that's low. I mean, I, I fish out of City Island. I'll fish out of um, um, Amity Hall, which is on the Juniata. I can go out of that campground that's in Duncannon. But I don't, I don't like going out of those areas when it's low. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's other areas, Hoover's Island, which is way up, way up north. Um, there's just a bunch of different places I go out of. Uh, but uh, right now the water's roughly 50 degrees. And um, uh, when I take people out, we're catch. I, I just had a trip today. We caught over 50 fish. I'm catching, um, yeah, th th these are smaller fish today. Um, but you know, it beats, uh, not catching fish at all. Um, we're using, uh, uh, Z-Man baits, Z-Man plastics. So the ticklers and the uh, TRDs, and I'm using them on my, uh, my, the SWFA finesse jig head that I, uh, that I make. I'm using the 16th ounce ones, the three thirty second ounce ones and the, um, and the one and the eighth, one eighth. I find that the one eighth ounce jig heads may be a little heavy. It it tends to uh, wedge in the rocks a little bit um, easier than <clears throat> a three thirty seconds. Could, could you say those sizes again? I thought you said you said one eighth is too heavy. Yeah, I think yeah. one eighth is too heavy. This is a the, 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 these fish aren't responding. Uh, it's it's not like these fish are in an area where you want that bait to be sitting in the current on the bottom. Um, they're biting it while it's uh tumbling down the uh river mm. so that's what you want it to do is to tumble yeah you want it to tumble but you don't want it to tumble to where you feel the rocks every single rock because that's how you get wedged in the rocks and you lose your jig head you want it just to float over top of them kind of hit them a little bit and tumble what is what makes a susquehanna so special in your opinion it's the uh, uh number of fish that's the power of the Susquehanna River. I mean, there's just in areas there's there's just thousands of fish. I mean, I, I don't I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's just it's incredible on how many fish are on that river, how many smallmouth uh, inhabit that river. It's incredible. And then uh, the the Juniad is the same way because it's a tributary to the uh, Susquehanna. Oh, the good old Juliet. I mean, I remember when we had our, uh, I mean, if you guys want to go back on, on the records, I had a farmer on and we talked about the Juliet and that's something I'm going to get into next year more is probably the Juliet too. And, and just Susquehanna content in general. Um, and again, guys, uh, the phone number here is two, four, zero, five, four, two, nine, eight, seven, seven. You know, I promised my wife, I wouldn't do this, but how about this first person to call in and ask Jeff a question? Because again, because of you guys, Patreon, I was able to upgrade my hardware to do better live streams. First person to call in with a question is going to win a ten dollars gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle, um, and hell, I'll, I'll get Jeff to autograph something for you. Uh, yeah. Something you can in public too, I promise. Uh, so do that, or you can just comment down below. Uh, comment either on Facebook or YouTube, and you can ask him strictly your questions. This this is for you guys. Um, so the Susquehanna, how do you break that sucker down? Because that's like a big freaking river. Uh, just over time, I mean, from uh, you got to start somewhere, right? So you just got to start at a certain point and uh, fish certain areas enough that you that you uh, feel very comfortable with them, and then you move on. 
I mean, there's no, no other way to really describe it. How many years have you been fishing that place? I don't even know now, man. Uh, guiding on it? Um, yeah. I don't know, man. Eight years, maybe, that I've been actually guiding on it. Like, you know, uh, people paying me to take them fishing on it. So about probably about eight years. Mm. You know, that, that's a different level of just going out and fishing it for fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it, you, um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I seem to learn things a lot better when I'm fishing and when I'm on trips and stuff. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm more focused. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I, I tend to notice things a lot easier when I have customers with me. Well, and it really helps. Like the more time you actually put into going through something like that, it just, it makes life so much easier. I mean, and, and again, it really gets back to just fishing in general, the time you put on the water and nothing you really can, can no, there's, at there's all. nothing, there's nothing, there's no equipment. There's no forward facing sonar. There's nothing that can, um, uh, replace time on the water. So we have a question. Here we go. Okay. First question here. At Brew Time Care, I'm going to give you a gift card. Um, I'm going to actually give you a gift card as well here for Jake's Bank Tackle. It's only going to be $5. Again, if you want, call into the show, and I'll give you a $10 gift card. All right, let's, uh, let's, give out, let's give out three packs of those jig heads, too. All right. Hell yeah. All right. So three packs whoever... people, uh, you know, a, a pack to a pro, to a, three different packs. So they could either, they're going to either be a 16-ounce pack a three thirty second pack or a one eight pack. Okay. I love it. So guys, uh, if you call into the show two, four, zero, five, four, two, nine, eight, seven, seven, Jeff is going to give you basically a whole tackle box and I'll give you a gift card here. Let's get uh brew tank outdoors question answered here. Never got a guide. Do I bring my own gear or does he supply it? Well, it depends on what kind of gear you have. If, if, if you're, if you're geared for small river, small mouth, you can bring your gear. If, uh, you're not too sure, um, you know, maybe the first time you go out with that guide, uh, just use their equipment and uh, see if your equipment's equivalent to what they have. But you want you want something that's in be, you know somewhere between six and a half to seven feet long, a rod, and you want it to be a medium light to a medium rod, a, a, a fast tip rod. That that's what I like. And um, you want to have uh, you know somewhere between a thousand series and twenty five hundred series reel. That's what I like. And um, you want to have braided line. I prefer to have somewhere around 20 pound test braided line. That's equivalent to like uh, six pound monofilament, I believe. The stuff I mm. use is just, I, I, I like a gamma um, fishing line and I use their uh, torque. Um, I also sell it, their torque um, uh, braid. And then whatever type of um, uh, fluorocarbon or monofilament you like to fish with, use that as a leader. Have you seen Daiwa just came out with something really cool? It's like, uh, it's like fly fishing leader material. So example is it comes in 10 foot pieces. And no, it'll start, so what it'll do is it starts out as a 15 pound test, 12 pound test where you tie your leader knot. And then it, it slowly goes down to six pound test or eight pound test, depending on what you want. So you can get those huh. good knots. And it, it looks cool. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it's really neat. I haven't seen that. And I, I was just thinking to myself, like, well, it, it, if if they're coming out with it, Sunline, you know, in a couple of years, everyone's going to have it as well. So it's the concept of it, which I think is quite interesting. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. That, no, that's pretty cool. So I think that is interesting what you bring up, because when you go out as a guide, it's got to be frustrating. Not frustrating is the wrong word. There's so many talent levels you deal with. You have the person that's going out for the first time that's never been on the water. And then on the flip side, you have somebody that maybe he's just, he's really, really good. Do you have that perfect, that, the one that you enjoy most? I know some people I've, I've heard say like, I don't like the elite anglers because it's boring. And there's something magical if you're the guy that watches somebody catch their first fish for the first time. So, so w w what is your perfect, your perfect ideal client? Or the one that gives you the best memory. Let's do that. Who, who, what memory sticks out in your mind? Someone, just someone that enjoys being out there and um, doesn't really bring um, 
any type of expectation with them other than to enjoy the day. Mm. That's pretty much it. I mean, um, uh, some people expect five and six pound smallmouth, and uh, some just want to catch fish. Most just want to catch fish and enjoy enjoy their day, but some people show up and uh, think they're going to catch five and six pound smallmouth all day long. What, what's your best memory? Um, no, probably, uh, and this isn't even a small, we didn't even catch a smallmouth. It's with, um, um, I'll probably, uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. I'd have to look at my phone, uh, but he lives over there, uh, over near Frederick. Uh, he's a real good guy. And, um, he was out with me two, two years ago in spring. And we were fishing with four-inch Cinco's. And um, uh, he he reeled in a uh, four-foot-long muskie. A four-foot-long muskie? Yeah, on eight-pound uh, test. I have it Holy. on my website, the muskie. Holy crap, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's freaking insane. He'd never even, you know, he'd never seen a fish like that in his life on, on the Potomac. Well, what's the full the coolest fish catch you remember? Just just you personally. Oh, for me? Yeah. Um I'm trying to think. I caught one this year on the uh Susquehanna that was over six pounds. Oh, that's a freaking giant, dude. In this in the summer. I caught it uh I caught it on a uh on a Z-Man tickler. <laughs> what is it? Okay. What is it with that bait? I, I have a friend and he absolutely smokes it on that thing. And I don't like, it, it's not a Cinco necessarily. It's not a tube. It's like a weird hybrid, but it works so well. I don't know. I think it's surprised. It's, it's, it's profile. It's the, uh, it's the little four appendages or legs at the bottom of it. Um, that just get them going, I think, because they'll choose that over a, a net rig sometimes. They will. The time. Yeah, it, that is weird too, because they will choose that thing over a net rig. And I, 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 again, I get my butt kicked all the time because I won't use it. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> Eventually I'll learn, but it, it is such an effective bait. What type are you just using your specialty hook for that? Or do you have multiple ways that you like to rig it? No, and then guys, I use that. I use that finesse hook that I, uh, that I, I sell the SWFA finesse hook. I think that's a nasty hook, man. You got, you got a copy of that right here. Let's see it. What the hook? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me grab guess, one. I'm just going to show off that tackle and then I'm going to be popping out some questions here. We got William Barnes, bud. Uh, let's see what we got there. We have just like tapered leader for fly fishing that fishing that were available starting back in the 1980s. Yes, yes. It is a cool idea that they actually are just taking fly fishing tech and they're kind of modernized. Oh, here we go. There it is. There's What's the name of that hook? Can you see it? I sure can. What's the name of that hook? It's the SWFA finesse hook. Hmm. It's got a little bend. You see, you, you see the bend in the, um, in the neck up there? Yep. It fits those... Uh, it fits these two and three quarter inch type baits really well. Dude, that thing looks really cool. Hmm. And um, and I think it's uh, it's a, it's a it's a number one extra wide gap hook. And I think it um, how it's angled, how the hook is actually made, is what um, I mean. It it pretty much uh, um, every time you set the hook, you're gonna um, you're probably gonna hook the uh, heck out of the fish. It's a pretty good hook. Very seldom do they come off of it after you set the hook. I I can't. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And then what size line are you actually using with that too? Uh, the line, um, anywhere between eight pound and uh, 10 pound more <laughs> carbon. I would go with 10. Honestly, like from my experience, even though I preach going with smaller lines, Start with your 10 and then work down. I really think that's kind of it personally opinion what I think you should do. We have a great question here from Kenny. 
Uh, I'm going to bring this bad boy up just so everyone can see it. I'm, I'm going I'm to share my screen. Uh, because again, with the private Facebook group, guys, the problem with it is it doesn't display your name. So um, this is this is uh, from from Kenny. Let me pull it up here. All righty. So Kenny says, uh, with colder weather, let me make it a little bit bigger. There you go. With colder weather coming tomorrow through the weekend, how do you see that impacting the Upper Potomac Somalis? What lure slash technique would be would you be trying first? Plastic. I'd use um, small plastic tubes, those uh, Z-Man ticklers, a uh, TRD, something like that. So you're, you're not going to be like moving or winding bait or something like that? No, and then uh, maybe a, a suspending jerk bait. Those suspending jerk baits that are um, like the uh, uh, Pointer 65s, so they're 65 millimeters. What, what's that in inches? Two and a half? I don't know. Yeah, two. That sounds good. <laughs> Something like that. It's, it's not. Um. Yeah, but that's why it's called a sixty-five. It's a Japanese bait, so it's in millimeters. <clears throat> Something you small up. like that. Let me. Oh, let me yeah. get one of those. Yeah, get some baits, dude. Come on, man. That's what this is about. Then, guys, if you want to win the big prize, the big prize today is super easy. You got to call the phone number, uh, two four zero five four two nine eight seven seven. Uh, give that phone number a call. You win a massive prize. You win some jig heads from Jeff, and you win a ten dollars gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. All you gotta do is call that number. Just want to see if it actually works with uh, with all the new tech I got right now. Um, so here, here we go. I'll move my screen. Hold on. Let me, let me get rid of my screen. Oh, that's nice. What color is that? American Shad. And then here's a set. Here's a seventy eight. Hmm. They, uh, these fish love those toy, uh, the uh, pointer series of uh, suspended jerk baits by Lucky Craft. They like those. So here, let me grab another one too. I mean, these are literally the only jerk baits I use. I absolutely love jerk bait fishing. I got to find some of my stuff. I got some. And then um, you've got your uh, Rapala, Rapala XR8, and that's called Hot Steel. Oh. Ooh, I like that color a lot. That's a hot color. Yeah. Oh, we got a phone. The other, the other color that I like, or I'm sorry, the other uh, is Mega Bass. Sweet. So Mega Bass, that is a freaking awesome brand. Um, I absolutely have. Hey, who's who's the caller? What's your name? Oh no, they hung up. So guys, hotline, I had two people call in on the hotline. The hotline is still available. If you want to call in, you can. Uh, the number. Pull that back up here. Uh, the number again is two. Four zero five four two nine eight seven seven. Call back in, win a prize. Um, and anyway, just to continue with what you're saying, you were saying um, Mega Bass. They really are coming out with better and better stuff for I think us smallmouth guys. Uh, yeah, we have one ten junior is the one I'm talking about. One ten junior. Yeah, there, there might be other ones. That one, is it the one ten junior? The Vision one ten junior or something? Uh, there's probably other ones guys are using that catch catch smallmouth too. But I, I like I like that that size, the Lucky Craft, and I like um, the Rapala X Raps. Oh, and I also like uh, Rapala Husky Jerks. They're the, the same size, like they go by numbers eight, tens, six, stuff like that, and they're all the same size. The Husky Jerks and the Rapala um, X Raps. It's just the X Raps are a little bit fancier looking. And they have those feathered tails. I really don't remember the last time I actually used one of those. Those husky jerks. Yeah, I, it's been a while. Like because well, again, work real well. Here, really? Let me, grab one, let me grab one of them too. Hold on. Uh wow. So yeah, so far all the technology is working fantastic. Now that I figured out this really really fancy uh 
fancy soundboard. Uh, I don't sell these on my website. But, oh, that's, um, oh, that's a cool color. I like color. It's like a perch color. And this is this is nice. about the same size as a uh, Lucky Craft sixty five. Oh wow! And they have some nasty hooks on them too. But all these suspending jerk baits are um, they're all around the same price range, except for the Mega Bass, which you'll find in about twenty dollars a pop. Hmm. Yeah, and that's honestly like I think guys, I I mean, Mega Bass is a banging bait it really is good but good lord it just I, I pucker when i fish that thing in like standing timber like submerged timber and you're jerking that thing down um and you're like please god don't let me hit this thing and i'm talking like before i got um forward facing sonar which is here's helpful. one right here omega bass. Oh, that's a pretty color i think this was called blue herring or something like that oh dude that, that is one a, seems to work real well too that's a really nice color i like that color a lot But if you break them, if you break the Mega Bass, I believe you could still send it back in and they'll send you a new one. Wait, is that true? I believe so. It used to be true. I don't know why they don't advertise it. More people would probably buy their baits if that was the case. Or break them on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I guess they could break them on purpose too. I mean, it's a $20 bait. So you imagine how many people would be skipping that thing into a dock just to get a brand out, new one? Out of the three brands that I told you about, I think the uh, the brand that has the best hook that comes with it is uh, Rapala. I don't think Lucky Craft's uh, out of the box hooks are very durable. I mean, they're sharp and they catch fish, but you'll notice that they'll start getting they'll start getting bent up, and the um, and eventually you'll you'll break them pulling them out of the fish, and the uh, Mega Bass hooks do the same thing. What um. Do you guys, and I'm going to answer this question first because it just came through. Rusty Lane. Here you go, boss, man. Uh, hot Steel is a killer. Yeah, Hot Steel. I, poof, dude, that's a beautiful color. Um, I really like that color. The The thing I I truly believe and I preach is you got to change out your treble hooks. Um, if you have the means to do so, always update your treble hooks. It's just going to save you so much heartache, especially when you're dealing with those baits. If you get sticky, sharp hooks like the um, my favorite ones that they still make are the Aaron Martin's Finesse Trebles. Upgrade to those bad boys because they're sticky, sharp, and oh my goodness, they just look at it. They're going to become hooked up, uh, and that's just my my general tip with that. Uh, and, and the other thing I really suggest, um, and Jeff, I don't know if you do this, but like with those with those style heads you use for the tickler and for for Ned rigs and things like that, just dab it with some super glue too. Especially if you're dealing with a lot of like bluegill or googly eye in the summertime that pull your bait down off the hook. Yeah, I, I feel super glue helps a little bit. Um. And the, uh, I just showed you guys a jig head. It's unpainted. I sell them in three different ways. Unpainted. I sell them in green pumpkin color and that black color. And, All right. Uh, we have our. They're excellent jig heads. Caller, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Colin. Hi, boss. Um, what's your question? Uh, question is for Jeff. Um, when he goes out this time of year to fish, it, is is there a certain time of day he likes better than another? Does he go extremely early or is later in the afternoon a better time? For what time of year? All right, sweet. Well, currently. Currently. Gotcha. Oh, currently? I go out um, about 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't need to, you don't need to get out there very early. Did you touch your phone? Because you lost your volume there. Can you hear me? Yeah, lost your volume. Uh, did I, no, I didn't touch your phone. <laughs> yeah, Jeff right now, guys, is on a cell phone. And so when he plugged it me? in, it, um, I can yeah, hear you now. Lost your volume. Hello. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, yeah, thank you so much, sir. Um, you just won a gift card, a $10 gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle, and you won uh, a gift package to Jeff Green. Uh, just text me on this number, and I'll get you your gift packet tomorrow morning. So, let's, uh, hey, can you still hear me? Can you still hear me?
There we go. Sorry about that, Jeff. You can hear me now? Yeah. I just want to okay. answer your question. Yeah, no, 8, 8 a.m. is about the time I go out nowadays. Mm, 8 a.m., And then okay. uh, once, once we get into winter, um, I'd usually run a trip around. I'll start a trip around 10 a.m. I find that that time of day, the uh, if it's going to be above freezing, it, it's above freezing at about 10 a.m. What about that time? Is it just the is it just the temperature that makes you that that works for you for that time? Yeah, I don't feel like it's gonna help either way if you go out earlier. You, your your line and stuff's just gonna freeze up. Do you think it's that actually uh, harder on your equipment? Do you think that changes at all as the year goes on? Do you think that time frame moves at all? Yeah, yeah. In the, in the summertime, I go out as early as I can. Right when it gets light, we'll go out. What about in the winter? 10 a.m. Same thing. So, like, I'm sorry. Let me let me try this. I feel like I'm saying stupid things. So, November, December, January, it's always 10. Even in January, it'll be 10. It wouldn't be like 11. No, it's at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I mean, if we had to bump it up, we'd bump it up to 11 o'clock. But um, right now, I'm, I'm still going out at around 8 a.m. right now. But once mm. we start getting uh, real cold temperatures... Um, at night, I'll bump that up to 10 a.m. That's freaking awesome. So, I mean, guys, there you have it. 10 a.m. Is, is absolutely the witching hour right there for that. Again, guys, so I got a brand new soundboard. That actually worked out really well. I got the buttons dialed in there. Uh, if you want to call in again, I'll give away another $10 gift card uh, for to a new number, 240-542-9877. Ask Jeff a question, uh, and, and we'll get you dialed up into the queue. Um, when does winter start around here? And this is really... Uh, guys, and then again, Jeff has a whole bait section behind him, and also he has a website as well. So if there's a special bait that you see behind Jeff that you'd like to see, just get on the keyboard, type it up. Jeff will show it to you. But until you answer a question, I want to get to the next part of the show, which is what's going on with the Upper Potomac and the Susquehanna right now? And let's start with the Susquehanna, and we'll go to the Upper Potomac. All right. What uh, about the Susquehanna? Um, yeah, like it's fishing like. It's fishing really well. We're catching a lot of fish on every trip. And like I, I said earlier, we're, we're catching them on plastics, um, you know, as demand plastics. Um, and some of my uh, some of my pla SWFA plastics like tubes. And I have a, a, a Ned Rig type bait called a fat stick. We catch them on those. Um, and uh, and the jig and the, all the jig heads that I use, I pour. Uh, I have some that you can. Um, rig weedless and then i have some you can fish in open hook style hmm. uh, but, but the fishing the fishing's been real good on the susquehanna though like i said the water today was 50 degrees um had uh water was getting pretty clear it, it, it's getting pretty clear right now and um i'm catching fish in uh in swift water a lot of rocks that's so interesting. They're, 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 they're in the eddies and they're in the seams of the eddies, current seams of the eddies. Hmm. Well, what is the water temperature like up there in the Susquehanna? 50 degrees. What, what's the water temperature? Uh, and we're going to bounce back to Susquehanna here in a minute, guys. What's the temperature on the upper Potomac? Um, around 55. Interesting. So that's warmer. Well, that makes sense, yeah. I guess. The Susquehanna is farther north. Yeah. I mean, that's almost like, a, I, I feel like the. Uh, that part of Pennsylvania around Duncannon, Pennsylvania, is a whole nother climate. Really? And they're always, um, it, it always seems like the water's about five degrees colder up there any given time of the year. Hmm. That's interesting. That's really interesting. I didn't think of that. How much vegetation is there right now? Oh, we got a couple of questions that came in here. Uh, we got... We got Brew Tank. Uh, Brew Tank said, "I want to hammer them. I want to hammer them on BFS gear." Then he followed that up with, "I'm going to book a trip immediately." Uh, nice. And then we have William Barnes says, "49 at four locks on Tuesday." Damn, 49! Wow. Yeah, that, that's and, um, on the Susquehanna last this past week. It was that. It was at 45. The, 45. Water, the water temperatures come up on the Susquehanna. And then the uh, Potomac, you, you can look online right now to see what it is on the Potomac. I don't know what it was. I haven't looked at it today because I was on the Susquehanna. But I believe it's a close to, 
in the mid fifties, somewhere around there. That's interesting. Now, this is a really good question. And Brew Tank, I think he just won a gift card, a five dollar gift card at Jake's Bank Tackle with this one. So, would it be better to book a trip on the Susquehanna or the Upper Potomac this month? It depends on the day. Um, uh, compare and contrast it for the audience. Well, the Potomac River is real low. So, you know, weather's going to play a big, at least in my opinion, weather's going to play a, a big role in um, how well they're going to bite that day. Yeah, preferably, you want uh, cloudy conditions. Um, and uh, they've, been, they've been biting plastics up there. I mean, on the upper Potomac River. And they've been biting um, uh, suspending jerk baits as well. Hmm. Um, I've been catching on a trip. I, I guess this answers the question. I've been catching more fish on the Susquehanna, but that could change in three or four days. I could start fishing on the, the when I go back and fish on the Potomac, I might tell you differently. The bigger fish I've been catching right now have been on the Potomac River. I just want everyone to let, let that sink in that the Susquehanna. That's just a hard question to answer. That's like a, 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 that's just a hard question to answer. Why? Because I don't think there's a right answer to it right now. <laughs> Two beautiful women you have to pick from. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's uh, a tough question. That that, that question does, does it, is that the question you said deserves uh, some type of gift card? Yep, Brew Tank Outdoors. So would it be would it be better to book a trip on the Susquehanna or the Upper Potomac this month? Yeah, that's, with that's, that's, a, good, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I mean, both fish, both fish, good and bad throughout the year. It's right? easier. It's uh, the the water. There's still more water on the Susquehanna right now. And, and honestly, let's let's that's a great thing to bring up is is the water flow issues right now. And, and let's start with the Susquehanna before we segue into like the Potomac River part of the show here. Um, the Susquehanna River, what is like a repeat again? Like, what are the water levels like? And then what's the water clarity like right now? It's water's pretty clear, and it's um, it's at, at Harrisburg. It's at, it's at four feet, and um, it's starting to get skinny. Hmm. But the Potomac River is past skinny. Uh, if, if you look at Point of Rocks' it's gauge right now, it should be under a foot. I mean, it's just been so... Like, When was the last time we had a heavy rain? I don't even remember. I mean, I, I, I really don't. And, and it's kind of like, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where, where this goes going into the wintertime here because... You know, it would be really nice is if there was a heavy rain and the next, you know, before it gets... It, b before you start seeing these winter temperatures... If we got a heavy rain and the river came up five, six inches. Well, that would, would it be, everything, man. Would it be better to have a heavy rain or would it be better to be a consistent rain? A consistent rain. That's what I mean. A okay. consistent yeah. rain that doesn't make the water turn brown. Because we got William Barnes back in the chat here, boss, with uh, six feet of visibility at four locks. Yep. Like that's, wow. That's, yeah, that's freaking insane. Well, yeah, the Potomac's crystal clear. It, it, it's Potomac, you could take a GoPro up there right now and and um find fish that are just laying like catfish and stuff laying on the bottom and if you had a long enough pole you could probably film them with no problem and, and that's why i think a lot of the tournaments are being won um so big slack example i fished a tournament last weekend and then two weeks before that on on big slack and we it was being won or being fished well in the deeper section um i personally during the the Butch Ward event, I was fishing 20 to 23 feet of water, um, drop shotting. And uh, people that won that were fishing deep too. I don't think they're, I don't know if they're fishing that deep. And then last weekend, the guy won fishing, I think it was like 18 feet of water. And and so wow. there they're doing that because I, I partially believe it's because it's so clear. Personally, I believe it's because it's so clear out. I can't believe if you're fishing Shepherdstown or below four or, or below Big Slack between i would really say separate town all the way to the confluence that thing's got to be stupid shallow and, and then the section that you fish a lot of below harper's ferry I, I mean what does that generally run flow wise and what is it at now well it usually runs somewhere around three and a half feet is considered it's regular you know like normal pool i would i would guess i would say somewhere around three and a half to four feet and it's running right now it's at one eight hmm that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's 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 pretty low, and you got to pick and choose where you go. 
Um, Rusty, Rusty Lane says four locks is fishing really good right now. Interesting. That's cool. I wonder why. I wonder why that section is actually fishing good right now compared to the others. You know, I guess it's the first dam right on the Potomac going down. That maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Rusty, I've call in. Been around Shepherdstown in a while. It's probably it's probably stupid low up there. Is I haven't. There, is there anyone out there that's fished up around Shepherdstown? I, I think uh, I think William Barnes fishes up at Shepherdstown. Yeah, you know, uh, William, let me let me know in the chat. I just broke my my earphone, but yeah, William, let, let us know in the chat if you fished uh, Shepherdstown recently. The last time I fished Shepherdstown, I was probably sixteen. I used to fish that a lot with my dad, actually, or he would watch. He doesn't fish, but he would take us up there and fish there. And that's when there was musky in that section too, like a lot of big musky. Oh, there really are. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I didn't know that. A lot of musky up there. I, I mean, my thumbnail for some of my videos, the backdrop was a picture I took when I walked my dog at Shepherdstown. So, like, I mean, that that place is still is a pretty neat little area. Uh, Rusty Lane says, uh, "Fishing the fish are moving down to the deep water." Um, yeah, I bet like that that area is gonna get so much better. It really is. And you got William Barnes says, "I have not fished at Snyder's Landing slash Shepherdstown since July." Whew. Wow, dude. God, you got to get back out fishing more, but dude. Come on, man. We got what, what waders if you go fishing there. No, no kidding. Or you got an inflatable like Travis, something like that. Um, that's what we got to get you. Guys, we need to do a, a, a we need to do a GoFundMe to get uh, Jeff a, a inflatable. You can paddle some <laughs> section. Get them biceps, too. Um, so what is the vegetation like right now? Is it completely died or is there still pockets? No, it's pretty much died. And uh, now, now you're contending with leaves, mm. and the leaves are a pain in the butt too, because they'll they'll suspend in the water column, and you'll suck them up with your jet, because they're suspended in the water column. Oh God, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, but that'll end in another week or two, and then you won't have to really deal with that too much. What is what are you looking for? Is it just the water level that you're looking for for the river to turn back on? No, no, the river. <laughs> The fish are, fish are biting on the Potomac. You talking about the Potomac? Mm -hmm. No, they're biting on the Potomac. It's just um, you have to be you real careful when you're fishing and real quiet, and you have to you have to fish real real slow, and you got to make long casts to catch gotcha. these fish. Um, and and you're looking for uh, you're looking for structure in the water. You know, you're looking somewhere where there's ledges and they drop off from a foot to three feet, so to speak. You know. Or a tree hmm. underwater, or something like that. If you can find trees and areas where the where the um, where there's rock ledges and they drop off, um, even if they run para, you know parallel to the shorelines going up up river, you'll find fish. And anywhere hmm. where you're fishing during the day, where you can see where it's where it's it's real low and clear, and then it kind of gets like a green, a dark spot where the water uh, depth changes, and it gets and there's like a depression in the river. There's probably fish sitting in it. Hmm. How, how far of a cast are you trying to make right now? If you could spitball, I don't know, thirty yards. Damn. Okay. Twenty-five yards. I mean, you know, and and here, here's here's a tip too, for when you're uh, fishing in water this clear, and you know this uh, water so low and clear, is uh, fish to the back of the boat if if, if you're on a boat. If you're on a, a raft or a boat or something like that, um, or a kayak, um, well, a kayak you can drift down, but you want to fish down river. You don't necessarily want to fish where you've been. You want to fish where you're going because you'll see the glare on the water down below, and you know when you look down river and you're floating down, you can't see in the water. You want to cast as far out there as possible. Mm. If, if you can't see them, they can't see you. But if you can see those fish, they can see you. That's a good point. Huh. There's That's just no other way for me to describe that to you. But you want to you want to fish as you're floating down river. You want to fish down river. That's a really freaking good tip, guys, from the myth and legend himself. And another myth and legend we have is Warren Johnson's in the house. Uh, oh, I, weighed, I, I, I weighed that area a, uh, a lot. And that is, I'm, I'm sure he's saying about the Snyder's Landing slash Shepherdstown uh, since July. What kind of waders you got? Yeah, actually, we've had a lot of people, Warren, commenting about what type of waders. And honestly, I'm going to 
I'm going to actually twist your arm and get you back on the show to talk about this guy's insane. He wades in the wintertime all over the upper Potomac and he catches absolute monsters and, and walleye smoth and everything. And it's cool because I'm assuming he has the river to himself. If you're wade fishing that area. Um, but yeah, like what type of waders, um, there's different brands, right? It's like summer, winter, spring waders. Like it's not just one waiter. I think. I have a pair. I what do you got? Pair. It's a Cabela's brand and they're waist waders. Hmm. Um, I've had chest waders before. He probably's wearing chest waders. If he's going out in that water, uh, that, uh, out in the river like that. Oh uh, yeah. You see, but Warren's legit. Cause he says like, I have three sets of waders again. I'm getting, dude, I'm getting you on the show so you can show off all your stuff. Uh, he's got, he's got some really cool things. I bet he's got the really nice Sims ones with like the lining and everything. Oh, the Sims oh, ones are 500 bucks. I was just looking at those. Uh, uh, don't they have like a layer of insulation too? I don't know. I, I, there, there are so much money. I just looked at them and never picked them up. <laughs> I know talking to Fishhawk, uh, who you've had on you you've had on your your uh, your boat before. Fishhawk, yeah, man. The the one nice thing about those is those those Sims is they are insulated. I don't know the name of the brand, but Warren's got one here. Uh, oh my God, I gotta try to say this word. Uh, tid, tiddy, and I'm sorry, tidwe, tid, tid, I wouldn't even try pronouncing that. I just did, and I'm sorry if I just said an inappropriate thing. <laughs> Oh my god, I probably should not have even said that. What the hell is even that? Um hey, so, hey, hey, here you go. As simple as this, guys. Some waste waders. Or by those. Easy, easy done. I take these if the, if if I know the water where I'm going is real low, in case I have to get out in the wintertime, these are what I have. Warren says he also has a five millimeter five millimeter neoprene. And then he has uh, flyweight frog dogs. Oh, that's smart. Oh, flyweight frog dogs. That'd be good for the summertime. And he says it's actually pronounced tied we. That makes so much more sense than whatever thing I just said. Tied we. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Um, I got to get myself some wintertime waders. I want to start doing more trout fishing uh, next year. I really want to start getting into that too, just for fun, not like too hardcore. Uh, I don't want to just fish for bass. Cause I want to catch a muskie at some point in my life. I want to catch a big flathead trout. I want, I want to kind of do everything. Uh, Warren, thank you so much. That's so freaking cool. Uh, I'm going to get you on the show. I, we got to talk about that at some point. Um, with this weather going through here, is there a perfect temperature that you're looking for as we get closer to the winter time where the, the winter bite turns on? Yeah. Somewhere close to like 42 degrees. 42. Yeah. So, so somewhere, somewhere in that realm. Right around 42. Um, but but I, I feel like you can still catch fish um, somewhere around. If you can take people out, even if people have never fished for a smallmouth in cold water. And um, depending on the conditions, not the water, not water temperature, but depending on the conditions you have, the depth of water you have, the clarity of water you have, uh, you can get people to catch fish in about 37 degree, 37 degree water. Um, consistently it feels like it was that cold when you and i went out last year it probably was <laughs> i took the uh bass brothers you know who the bass brothers are i sure do yeah i took um i took them out and the water was uh it was on the susquehanna and we were whatever crap gauge i was reading on my boat that water when we started off had to have been 36 degrees that morning those fish came out of the water, just curled up and as cold as they could be. I still like this is this is probably my favorite time of year to fish for smallmouth. Like if you weren't fishing tournaments and would just fish seasonally just for just different times of year for different different species. Um, I really do think the fall through winter is the best time to be out on the river just to catch big ones. The potential Absolutely. of catching a, a fish of a lifetime on the river. Uh, a, a trophy smallmouth bass, 20 inches plus, a five, six pound smallmouth is now mm -hmm. all, the way in, all the way into the winter. Oh, absolutely, dude. It really is. Um, what are your top three baits right now for the upper Potomac, not the Susquehanna? The uh, jerk bait, the suspending jerk bait, the um, Z Man Tickler, and the um, Z Man TRD. 
Hmm. That's it. It's not fancy. Um, oh, the, the, the color, if you want to know the color, green pumpkin, Canada Crawl. People like Canada Crawl. Um, that color, um, what the heck is that color called? Depending on the uh, clarity of the water. The um, Copper Truce. Copper Truce is a good color. Copper Truce and um, uh, that California Crawl. I also have this here, and this is a new bait, guys. I just got, I got this, uh, this is a, I, well, I got this off of uh, JDM.com. So this is, this is called, this is from Evergreen. This is their P, PC5 crankbait. Look at that bad boy. Look how tiny that thing is. And just to give you guys some, some, you know, size, that's a little Sharpie. That's the cap. Like it's so freaking tiny. Hey, how about those? Um, talking about the uh, baits, you were throwing that one. The uh, the time we went out last year, you were throwing that blade bait. Yeah, I was, boy. Dude, yeah. blade baits are the shit, and no one throws them. I mean, it, it. I I will I will grant you this. It's annoying because you're gonna get them stuck, but it's like sometimes the last thing that I know they will bite. Um. Yeah, you could pour that. You can you can buy the um a mold for those things, man. And just I pour live, them out. I live in a one bedroom Ukrainian apartment. I do not think the wife would be happy if I started pouring my lead. I agree with you. I just need a little bit Crack more. Crack window, smell. man. <laughs> Make it sound like we're smelling meth or something. <laughs> yeah, the window. I, I do. I, I ran into a guy the other day. Well, no, he was actually. I'm not gonna say I ran into him. He was my he was my boater. Uh, I fished as a co-angler's last tournament and he poured his own net heads like you do. And yeah. it's so smart to do that just because of, of cost savings. It really is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how much do you think it is per hook for you to pour it versus like if you bought it in bulk? Uh, the hooks are in cents. Like wow. Pocket change. Yeah. That's smart. That's really freaking smart, dude. Um, what is your favorite swim bait to start throwing? Do you throw any swim baits in the wintertime? You mean um, you mean paddle-tailed swim baits or those big swim baits? Paddle. Because I don't throw those other swim baits, like the ones that are real popular right now. So the paddle tail swim baits, Kai, Kai Tech style swim baits. Mm -hmm. um, with the ones that are ribbed. Yeah. I like those. Uh, anywhere from three inch to four inch. My favorite here. I, I got some of them too. Let me show you. Yeah. My favorite guys is probably American trash fish. Um, so this is the, this is the four inch American trash fish. These have to be special ordered, but I really like these baits. And then this is like the, the six inch, uh, American trash fish, which I've talked about nauseum. Uh, they're absolutely freaking awesome baits. Oh, hey, another bait. Another bait to, to look out for, guys, when you're fishing this winter is don't forget to fish a uh, baby goat. Okay, that's a cool okay, freaking... This, this isn't a, you, don't, you don't take this guy. He's not a starter, okay? This guy's a cleanup hitter, all right? This guy right here, when things get tough, start throwing him, and he'll pay off. Okay, baby he goat. So look, these baits right here, these swim baits. Can they? Can people see these? Yep, they do. Oh, that's cool. What, what is that? It's a um. Well, it's a it's a Kai Tech, but I have a mold that knocks them off uh, one hundred percent. See it. You pour that? Yeah. Huh. You know how you're tough. <laughs> yeah, you have to go. Uh, you have to go far and away to find a mold like that. Did you make it yourself? No. No, I um, I went, I went and um, I ordered it online from the other side of the world. <laughs> Dude, you got to do what you got to do, right? From the Ukraine. We'll call That's that. Ukraine. 
we'll call that the Ukraine. The, the Ukraine. Victor. His name is Victor. That should be the name of the swim bait. We'll call that Victor. Yeah, but those baits right there. There's a. Um, I have a. I have the four inch one and I have a three inch one, and those are the ones I like throwing in the winter time. Here's a. Here's a three inch one. Can people see that one? Yep, they can. Well, that looks good. And then what I'm going to throw this on is a ball head jig. I'm not using that finesse jig head. I'm going to use hmm. a ball head jig with a number one or number two hook. Smart. Eighth ounce. I don't get too fancy with that. See, usually what I like to do is like, I like to go with, I don't know if you guys can see this. Like this is like a big boot tail. I like to find them. If you can get the biggest tail possible, because as that water gets colder, that bait's not going to kick as well. Um, unless you're going to go with like a wedge or something like that. Um, and there, some designs do it too. Like I love that one. That one has a really good tail on it. But if you guys do pour your own baits, make the wedge bigger in the winter and it's going to work better as that water gets colder. Pro tip there. Um, Jeff, I mean, we're, we're, we're almost, we're way over an hour here. Um, is there anything else that we forgot to cover? No, oh, yeah. we were talking about the uh, conditions. I think I talked about the Susquehanna. Oh, the baits for the Potomac River are going to be the same as the Susquehanna. Any type of small plastic, a uh, jig heads that are eighth ounce, 16th ounce, 332nd ounce. Um, you want to get them as far away from the boat as possible. Uh, preferably use those Z-Man baits. Um, or if you have some other type of uh, plastic bait that resembles those or a tube, Two and three quarter. I sell the two and three quarter inch tubes as well, um, and uh, suspending jerk baits. The, the the three brands I told you about, and uh, yeah. those suspending jerk baits, you don't throw them out and reel them in. You throw them out, and you um you almost fish them like they're uh, live bait. You throw them out, twitch them a little bit, let it sit, throw it out, or let twitch it, let it sit there, twitch it again. Give it time, twitch it again, and uh, just let it float down the river doing that. And once it gets behind your boat or down river of you, however you're fishing, if you're fishing with waders in the middle of the river, if you're on a kayak, something like that, um, just reel it in and float it down the river again. Guys, Jeff, the man, the myth, the legend, the, the, the one everyone reveres. Uh, we got one more question here. Uh, from Rusty Lane. Great show. Uh, great show. Keep keep up the great work. Absolutely, guys. Um, no, uh, we're going to have Jeff on again uh, for, for another live stream. Again, again, guys, if this is something you want me to do, uh, just how I do this format going forward, let me know if there's somebody else you want to have on just so you guys can ask questions yourself. I, I can get the audience involved here. I know you guys are diehards, the ones that are, are Patreon supporters here. You want to know this information of our local waterways. I'm fishing. Yep. It catches big fish. And the uh, quality of fish goes up. It really does. It, it does. And then, guys, super sharp hooks. Dress appropriately. Our next uh, live stream, the one thing I want to start touching on is just kind of winter apparel and just gear. We're going to just do a full gear episode talking about tackle and stuff. So that's coming your way. Guys, link in the episode link in the episode description everything that we talked about today this is going to be re-uploaded as a podcast uh later in the week probably monday to start the new week off that's when the algorithm loves it the most like and subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you guys next time on fishing the dmv we'll see you next time bye you're listening to fishing the dmv with your hosts thomas aarons and jared mounts fishing the dmv is brought to you by jake's bait and tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.